Uh, our ceremony this morning will be relatively brief. We're going to do two. Uh, my name is Dick Hines, and I am the uh, commander of Post 75 American Legion here in Franklin. Uh, histories will be read by Commander Carruthers from the VFW. This morning, uh, we have a fill-in chaplain since he's a little bit late. So Pat Doyle from uh, the Legion Post will read the prayer. And then uh, Commander uh, Nilo will lead us in a salute, and Tim O'Toole will provide taps. This is the second time we've had two on the same day. Uh, as the two granite columns are somewhat far apart, we're going to do two separate ceremonies, one for Patrick Cristano and the other for I thought it was interesting as I looked through a little bit of their history. Uh, Private Rostano entered the Army on October 4th, 1917. Private Patetti on October 16th, 12 days later. Did they know each other? Were they friends? They were only two years apart in age. They very well may have known each other. One kind of wonders about that. They died on the same day very close to each other. Um, and I believe they're both buried in the same cemetery. So it's, it's kind of kind of interesting when you think about that a little bit. They very well they may have been friends and they died together in France. So as we did yesterday, we will commence with the history and would ask the commander to read that please. Patrick Ristano, Private, U.S. Army, World War I. Patrick was only 23 when he died in combat. He was born in August of 1895. Parents, Michael and Sylvia Ristano. He was one of three brothers. Patrick had risen to the position of foreman of Franklin's rubber factory when he was called to join the Army on October 4th, 1917. After serving with the 76th Division for a time, he transferred to Company Kilo, 165th Infantry of the 42nd Division and went overseas on March 12, 1918. He was mortally wounded on the heights northeast of Sergei, France in the Ain Marne Offensive and died on this date in 1918. He was honored posthumously with the Purple Heart at a large ceremony at the Odd Fellows Hall in Franklin on January 7, 1968. His certificate was received by his cousin, Patrick Ristano, on behalf of Patrick's brother, Raymond Ristano of Falmouth. Thank you, Commander. Eternal Father, giver and sustainer of life, we come before you in thanksgiving for the life of Patrick Ristano, who gave his life defending the freedoms of this one nation under God. We thank you for the gift of his life and his unselfish service to our nation and those with whom he served. Those who loved him, friends and family were forever touched by his life. In such a moment as this, we are keenly aware of your own everlasting presence. And as our only remaining link with our comrade, we salute you and continue to commend him to your trust. <clears throat> Finally, Lord, we ask you to help us honor the memory of Patrick Rostano through our service to the living. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And cut. And salute. So this morning, this will be our, our second ceremony. 
And uh, this is for Private Alessandro Petetti. And again, he died the same day with Dr. Castano. This morning we'll hear a little bit about Alessandro. We'll do the same as we did before. The chaplain will offer a prayer. I think it's wonderful that the family, you have so many family members here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Again, it means a lot to us when we do that. So we're ready? Commander? Sure. Alessandro Patetti, Private, United States Army, World War I. Alessandro was born in Pescolin, Pescolinano, Italy, in 1893, son of Vincent and Nicola Padula Patetti. He was a baker by trade and lived in Franklin for eight years before joining the Army. He joined the Army October 16, 1917, joining Company India, 309th Infantry. He went overseas on May 18, 1918, and three months later died from his wounds on the state in 1918, on the heights northeast of Sergi, France, at the Battle of Argonne. He's buried in the Douce Argonne Cemetery. On January 7, 1968, Alessandro was posthumously honored with a Purple Heart at a large ceremony at the Oddfellows Hall in Franklin. His certificate was received by his brother, Dominic. Thank you, sir. Chaplain? Eternal Father, giver and sustainer of life, we come before you in thanksgiving for the life of <coughs> Alessandro Peschetti, who gave his life in defending the freedoms of our one nation under God. We thank you for the gift of his life and his selfish, unselfish service to our nation and to whom he served. Those who loved him, family and friends, will ever be touched by his life. In such a moment as this, we kindly are kindly aware of your presence, everlasting presence, and as our only remaining link to our comrade, we salute you and continue to commend him in your trust. Finally, Lord, we ask you to help us honor the memory of Mr. Presetti through our service of the living today. For God and country, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And hit. And salute. Good morning to you all. Good morning to family. Uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, Jerome's sister with us this morning. So thank you very much for the uh, We have been doing this in January and on the date of their death in honor of the veteran. We honor them for giving their life and service to our town. So this morning's ceremony will be conducted by myself Commander for Legion Post 75 here in town. Gentleman to my left, the wounded warrior fellow here, who's the district commander of the American Navy. Dave Labonte is the financial officer for Post 75. Captain Bob, chaplain for our post. This morning we have no representatives from the DFW here. Uh, commander Carruthers is at the National Convention, wherever that is. And uh, Chuck Bailey, who's been filling in for him, he is in Italy. So we are without the VFW this morning. We placed a memorial wreath here. We'll stay here till about 3 o'clock this afternoon uh, to show that we are honoring Anthony. <coughs> the ceremony is relatively short. We will read a history from what we know of, of Anthony's service time. Chaplain Bob will offer a prayer, and Commander Milo will offer a salute. 
and our very good friend Tim O'Toole from Taps Across America, who's been very supportive of this effort. Uh, we'll play that. Like Staff Sergeant Anthony J. Mucharone, Jr., U.S. Army. Staff Sergeant Anthony J. Mucharone, Jr., U.S. Army, was born on July 28, 1924, son of Anthony Sr. and Vera Mucharone. Anthony lived at 31 Cleveland Avenue with his parents, brothers, and one sister. Anthony attended the Franklin Public Schools as a member of Franklin High School class of 1942, but left high school at the end of his junior year. Anthony entered the Army on April 23, 1943. Staff Sergeant Anthony J. Mutrone Jr. rose in rank from Buck Private to Staff Sergeant in two months and was awarded a citation for personal and group heroism for his combat participation with the invasion forces in Normandy, commencing on June 6, 1944. He was a member of the 29th Infantry Division, which captured St. Lowe after almost continuous combat since its landing in Normandy on D-Day. Staff Sergeant Anthony J. Moucheron was also a member of the 116th Regiment of the 29th, which successfully attacked a heavy, fortified, and strongly defended beach in the vicinity of Neville sur Mer. The Corps commander cited the 29th's repeated and personal and group heroism and its unflagging devotion to duty, which overcame discomfiture, fatigue, and determined resistance of a resourceful enemy. Staff Sergeant Anthony J. Moutron died in combat in France on July 30th, 1944, at the age of 20 years. Anthony rests eternally in the Normandy American Cemetery at Ville sur Mer, France. Chaplain? Eternal Father, giver and sustainer of life, we come before you in thanks for the life of Anthony Gray Chan who gave his life defending the freedoms of which are under God. We thank you for the gift of his life and his unselfish service to our nation. Those who are in Those who love, they ever have touched by his life. In such a moment as this, we, <coughs> we are finally aware of your presence and in the only thing we make with our have, we salute you and continue to connect again to your trust. And finally, Lord, we ask you to help us honor the moment of transition to our service of the Lord. May God be blessed you when we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. And salute. Well, good morning. Good morning to you all. Welcome to this ceremony. This will be our 27th and 28th that we have done this year. Now, the purpose of doing these ceremonies is to keep the memory of the 45 who are honored by the columns here, keep their memory alive and be sure that they're not forgotten. While the ceremony is brief, we trust that the memories of doing them will be lasting. We place the memorial wreath in front of each of their pillars. We'll provide a history of what we know of their service to their country. The chaplain will offer a prayer, and then we will render a salute and taps will be played for each one. 
The wreath will remain here until later this afternoon. Can you hear me all right, Jude? Yeah, okay. So we will begin with Private Jules Perret. August 15th, Jules Perret, Private, U.S. Army, World War II. Private Jules E. Perret, U.S. Army, was born on November 12, 1907, the son of Jules and Maria Perret. Jules lived with his parents and three sisters at 29 Washington Street. Jules was a well-known sportsman who enjoyed hunting and fishing. For many years, he was an active member and tireless worker of the Franklin Rod and Gun Club. He did much towards the construction of the then new clubhouse at Uncas Pond. Before volunteering to go into the service, Jules worked as a weaver in Canton, Massachusetts. Jules entered the service on October 12, 1943 and trained at Camp Croft, South Carolina. Private Jules E. Perret went overseas serving um, in, in March of 1944, first seeing action in North Africa and later serving in Italy where he met his death on August 15, 1944 in a vehicular accident. Private Jules E. Perret, U.S. Army, was 36 years old at the time of his death while serving his country in World War II. Thank you, sir. Chaplain. <clears throat> Eternal Father, giver and sustainer of life, we come before you in thanksgiving for the life of Jules Perret, who gave his life defending the freedoms of our one God, one nation under God. We thank you for the gift of his life, his life and his unselfish service to our nation and to those he served for those who loved him, friends and family, we are forever touched by his life. In such a moment as this, we kindly are aware of your presence. And as our remaining, remaining link with our comrade, we salute you and continue to commend him into your trust. Finally, Lord, we ask you to help us honor the memory of Jules Perret through our service of the living today. For God and country, and in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Commander. And good. And salute. Order, arms, parade, rest. Thanks, sir. All right, so the second veteran we'll honor this morning is Staff Sergeant Robert Pirelli, one of the two most recent veterans that we lost in the battle from the, from the Iraq War. And Chuck Bailey, the VFW. He's going to read his history. Uh, Chuck and Robert were friends, so it seems to be appropriate that he should be the one to do this. Staff Sergeant Robert Ryan Pirelli was killed in action on August 15 while conducting combat operations in Iowa Province, Iowa. While serving with ODA 072, Company A, 3rd Battalion, 10th Special Forces Group. Pirelli, 29 at the time of Franklin Mass, was enlisted as an infantryman on December 2003. He later attended the Special Forces Qualifications course, graduating in 2005. He was then assigned as an engineer sergeant with the 10th Special Forces Group, Alpha, Fort Carson, Colorado. He had recently begun his fourth, first tour of duty excuse me, in Iraq in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom as a member of 
combined joint special operations task force, Arabian and Minster. Morelli's military education includes the basic airborne course, the warrior leaders course, the basic non-commissioned officers course, and the Arabic, Arabic basic modern standard language course. His awards and decorations include two Army Big Conduct Medals, the National Defense Service Medal, the Iraqi Campaign Medal, Global War and Terror Terrorism Medal, Professional Development Ribbon, Army Service Ribbon, Overseas Service Ribbon, Combat Infantry Badge, Parachutist Badge, and the Special Forces Tag. Rob was survived by his father, who is now deceased. And I, I'd like to mention his dad was a Marine and served in Vietnam. His mom, Nancy, brother, Sean, and sister, Stacy, were in my Special Lugo, to feed the offense. Thank you, sir. Eternal Father and giver and sustainer of life, we come before you in the thanksgiving of the life of Robert Pirelli, who gave his life defending our freedoms of this one nation under God. We thank you for the gift of his life and his unselfish service to our nation and to those who we, who we serve. Those who need loved him, friends and family, will ever be touched by his life. In such a moment as this, we are kindly aware of your presence and <clears throat> in our only remaining link with our comrade, we salute you and continue to commend him into your trust. Finally, Lord, we ask you to help us honor the memory of Robert Pelelli through our service of the living today. For God and country, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And that's it and salute. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.